Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be using the Canon R7 and we're going to be testing out its macro capabilities. Now if you watched the previous video that I made, you'll know that I tested it out for wildlife and I came to the decision that I really do like the Canon R7 and that it definitely has some distinct advantages in terms of wildlife over my Canon R6. Now the same thing is going to be true for macro and there's a couple of different reasons for that. This being an APS-C sensor, one, I'm going to be using flash for most of my macro photography. So that alleviates the issue of not being able to shoot at high ISO or having less high ISO performance being an APS-C sensor. That's not going to be an issue because my macro flash will be taking care of that for me. So not an issue there. The other thing is that the APS-C sensor is going to provide a larger depth of field, which is actually a huge advantage when it comes to macro work because shooting at really close ranges like this, you're already slicing down to very, very shallow depths of field. So for that reason, again, we're going to have another advantage. So having the really good autofocus, having the lighter weight setup, all of these things are going to be advantages when it comes to shooting macro. Macro. So I've now got this new Godox MF12 little macro flash and I'm really liking this new setup and getting the chance to actually test it out with the R7 is actually really fun as well. I'm using a Canon EF 100 millimeter macro lens. Obviously that's adapted onto the RF mount. Now there's one very distinct macro advantage that comes with the Canon R7 over the Canon R6 and that's the ability to actually focus stack internally and have it actually put all of those shots together and make you a focus stacked image. Now I'm gonna come back to that a little bit later in this episode. Right now we're gonna be using the flash. You can't use the flash because you are shooting in electronic shutter mode and it's just shooting a bunch of rapid shots so the flash wouldn't keep up if I was to do a focus stacked shot like that. But we're gonna come back to that. But as far as what I'm normally doing when it comes to macro, and that is going to be shooting not high burst rate like I'm doing right now. I would be doing single shots, but usually doing single shots here, I do a lot of B macro photography and this camera is absolutely awesome for it. Now, this has been a really, really nice macro setup that I've used on my Canon R6, but now I'm using it on the R7. Now, the thing about the R7 when it comes to macro is one, like I said, APS-C, big advantage there. I've now got a larger depth of field, which is what we're always striving for when it comes to macro photography. But two, I've got a really, really high megapixel sensor now, which is going to allow me to crop. And that's been the really big advantage for macro for me. You know, the autofocus is great. It's not quite as good as my R6. I still maintain that. I notice that I have more keepers with my R6. But that being said, this autofocus is still very, very good, very, very amazing, and works well once you get used to it. So. I'm not having any complaints about the autofocus, but what I am noticing is a massive advantage when I'm able to crop and have still seriously really good image quality, no matter how much I crop these images. You know, using the R6, I kind of told myself, you know, megapixels don't matter. And in a sense, they don't. But in a sense, they do, guys, because, you know, I'm noticing that I was suffering with those lower megapixel shots sometimes. If you want to crop a lot, it's going to start to become an issue, and that's not an issue on the R7. And that's a really big advantage, again, with wildlife and macro photography. And those are my two main types of photography that I really enjoy doing. So for me, the Canon R7 has just been a really fun camera to get used to. Now, I'll also be putting out an episode about this flash. I've just recently got this Godox macro flash, but also loving having this flash. Up until now, I would have been using a cage with an external speed light connected and like arms and it was awkward and heavy. Getting rid of the cage, getting the flash up on the front of the lens, been a massive advantage in terms of just moving around and not getting tired when shooting. So I'm actually loving this system and I will be putting out a review specifically about that. So if you're interested in that, look forward to that. That will be coming. I do think that there are distinct advantages, and especially when it comes to macro photography over a Canon R6. This has been my favorite camera to use for macro photography, to be honest with you. The high megapixel sensor, the ability to use autofocus when shooting macro, and that's been a really big deal. The R6 
was the first camera that really made me feel like I actually could rely on the autofocus system because before that, all of my other cameras, I basically shot in only manual just because autofocus wasn't reliable. Now, I'm not saying the autofocus is perfect because in a macro scenario, it is tough and it's not 100% perfect, but it was the first time using my Canon R6 where I felt like, hey, I actually can rely on my autofocus. I do get nice tack sharp shots sometimes, ones that I probably wouldn't get when shooting manual focus. So it was a really huge step forward and I'm glad to see that the R7 is also the same thing. I'm able to use the autofocus when I'm shooting bees, moving things, it's tracking them when using the animal tracking. So very, very good as far as being able to actually rely on autofocus when shooting macro photography. The other thing is being able to shoot those shots and maybe I can back off a little bit now, which is very, very advantageous when shooting macro because the more you back off, the larger your depth of field mixed with the larger depth of field from an APS-C sensor and the fact that it's very high resolution, I can crop back in and make it look like I was shooting really close. So although some people might not agree with that tactic, I think it looks nice, I think it looks good. So it's been a huge advantage for me in terms of macro photography, really because of that high megapixel sensor. And again, just the awesome autofocus that comes out of these R bodies that we're getting now. So one more little advantage that Canon decided to throw our way in terms of macro photography is the ability to actually internally focus stack. And not only internally focus stack, because the Canon R6 can do that, but now it can actually compile all of those together and give you the finished image. It actually gives you that photo stacked image, which is really, really cool. So all you have to do is hit menu, go to your focus bracketing and turn that on. And then it gives you a bunch of options. You can choose how many number of shots you wanna shoot, the increment or the change in the focus as you go. And I've even had luck with hand holding this stuff. So let's try this flower right here. It's not gonna be anything special, but let's bring it down to like, let's say F8. We'll put it on auto ISO here. And I'm just gonna hand hold it here. So you see how it just rapid fires all of those right off real easy for you. Now again, you are in electronic shutter mode, so you wouldn't be able to use like a flash. You wouldn't be able to do it because it's just gonna shoot them so quickly. So you are limited in some ways here. But the cool thing is I can now hit play. And now there's actually all of those shots there. But not only that, you have the finished focus stacked image, which is actually really, really cool. Huge advantage there. It's limited in some ways but it's a really big advantage when it comes to macro photography. So very, very glad to see that. So think about it here. You've got a couple of distinct advantages over even a more expensive full frame Canon R6 when you're thinking about macro photography. The APS-C sensor is not going to be limited in terms of ISO performance if you use a flash. It's going to give you an advantage in terms of depth of field for macro photography. You're going to have internal focus stacking where you can actually have a finished product and shoot that stuff handheld. That's seriously amazing. Another little advantage that they gave you with Canon is they bumped up the native sync rate of your shutter speed. So I can now shoot at one 320th of a second as opposed to one 250th of a second like I could with my R6. So being able to shoot at slightly higher shutter speeds while not needing to go into high speed sync mode is a big advantage as well because while I do shoot in high speed sync mode sometimes, I find that freezing motion works much better when just using the one single blast of flash as opposed to the multiple blasts of flash that will happen when shooting in high speed sync mode. So high speed sync mode has its place, but again, 98% of the time, I'm not doing that. I'm trying to stay where it's just going to be that native sync mode where I don't need high speed sync. And having a higher shutter speed is advantageous for freezing something moving. I photograph mainly bees when it comes to macro photography because my girlfriend grows this great little garden here and we get all kinds of insects, but I really, really enjoy photographing bees. That's probably my favorite thing to do. And again, just huge advantage to the Canon R7, even over my Canon R6 or any other camera that I've used. The Canon R7 has been my favorite macro camera to date so far. 
So if you are a macro photographer like myself, I think you probably want to seriously consider the Canon R7. It's a really, really nice camera. There's not a lot of things to complain about. You can shoot in 4K C-Log, do all kinds of really cool video stuff when it comes to macro. I definitely think that you're going to enjoy the Canon R7. Does it have limitations? Yes. In macro, I think it excels the most. That's where it makes the most sense. The Canon R7 has been one of the best cameras that I've used. Would it entirely replace my Canon R6? No. But does it have some distinct advantages in terms of wildlife and macro photography over my R6, yes it does. And I wouldn't want to get rid of it. I think having both of these cameras complements each other very well. For instance, when I was out this morning, before the sun came up, I was out in the woods, I started with my R6. Better ISO performance, better low light. As the sun came up and the light came out, slapped on my R7. Better reach, just as good autofocus, or close to just as good autofocus, and having those advantages for wildlife when having the right conditions for it. Like I say, having this R6 and the R7 paired together is to me kind of like the little super combo. They both complement each other very, very well. One's high megapixel, one's low megapixel. One's good in low light, and one's good at far reach. So for macro, for wildlife, I think it makes a lot of sense for people to look at the Canon R7 very seriously. It's a really, really nice camera. Anyway, guys, I hope that this stuff kind of answers some of the questions that you might have. If it did, go below, subscribe, click the notification bell. I'm gonna have all kinds of more stuff coming out about the Canon R7, and I'll see you on my next video.